Listen. You can't get the power from God from a counselor. No. From a therapist. From some formula. You can't just change your entire life, experience the fullness of God's power if you have been living a sinful pattern. I can do through, I can go through anything in the strength of Christ, but I can't do it without the strength of Christ. And the strength of Christ only is when we walk in obedience to Christ. If you're walking out of the will of God, you're walking in not obedience to God, you cannot expect the power to go through crisis. So, when people run off to get a fix, we're going to go to rehab. It's a popular day, isn't it? They get drunk. Some movie star wants to go to rehab. When people run off to get people to fix them, number one, most likely, they do not understand the power of Christ. Secondly, may not know the power of Christ because this is a product of their own sin. Sometimes it's not the product of their own sin. Sometimes they need biblical instruction. Sometimes they need encouragement. Sometimes they need biblical counseling. And I would say, in most cases, you should at least start with spiritual, biblical counseling with your problems before you go to some therapist. The greatest therapist in the world is Christ and His Word. But many people are looking for a quick fix of a pattern of sin that has led them into a result that they can't resolve. And they will never be resolved until they begin to live an obedient life. This woman couldn't figure out why she's been married three times and living in adultery now. She can't figure out how come she can't live a Christian life. She's been married three times and she's living in adultery now. I think that person's got a misunderstanding of what God wants. She's living in disobedience. How do you experience the sustaining power of contentment in your life? It is a result of obedience. Now I know you don't like to hear that. We don't like to go to the doctor and the doctor says, if you want to get rid of pneumonia, if you want to get rid of diabetes, if you want to get rid of all the other stuff in your life, lose 30 pounds. I don't want to do that. Well, then keep your diabetes. You live in sin, you're going to reach re the result. You say, well, I want to be more spiritual. Turn off Oprah. <laughs> Turn off television. Quit listening to your family. Let me tell you something. I love my grandchildren, but they don't come before the Lord. My dad taught me something growing up. My dad had a lot, a lots of friends. He had a lot of unsaved friends. You wouldn't believe how many of them showed up on Sunday morning out of the clear blue sky. And Dad said, you have two choices. Stay home or go to church with me, but guess where I'm going? I'm going to church. Not he was a preacher. It didn't make any difference. Sometimes... We think we can have our quick fixes, but we don't. And so you come to a therapist and the doctor says, here's what you need to do. When you get, when you get angry, here's what I want you to do. Instead of lashing out at somebody, find a pill and hug it for 20 minutes. <clears throat> hug.
like the pillow for 20 minutes. Well, that's a good one, isn't it? No, if you get angry, it's a spiritual problem. How do you experience the sustaining power of contentment in your life? It's a result of obedience. That's right. Amen. The sustaining power and contentment and satisfaction of God is provided to the one whose in and obedient life has come to the end of the resources. You get on Dr. Oz and tell him how you're living your physical life. Boy, I bet he'll run you up and down the other side, won't he? <laughs> he'll put you on one of those scales and find out just how well you are. He'll put you on a truth to, and he'll tell you, you may be 40 years old, but your body is 75. If you don't do something about it, you're going to die. Man, he's blunt. You think, I'm blunt? Dr. Oz is blunt, and you take it and turn on this. You take, you do it the next You turn it on the next day. Some of you won't ever come back to church again. I'm just kidding. There is a sufficient that brings contentment. How can you gain contentment? In your marriage, and in your environment, in your life. Number one, being confident in God's sovereign providence. Right. Number two, being satisfied with little. Number three, being independent of circumstances. Number four, being sustained by God's power. And I'll explain next time. I'll give it to you the next time. Number five, because we're going to quit. Concern for the will. Concern for the will being of others. Concern for the well being of others. If you spend your whole life worrying about you, if all you do is worry about you, you spend half of your time worrying about you. It's all about you. Shut up. You will most likely never be content. Wait till you preach the next time. <laughs> you will most likely never be content. I'm <laughs> just kidding. As you as you are quite being concerned about yourself, if you'll be lost and concerned of others, you will experience satisfaction. You say, Brother Charles, I thought that's supposed to be an encouraging message. I didn't think I was going to get beat over the head tonight. Well, if you're living right, you won't look at it that way, will you? Right. Amen. No. Right? Right. I like this bunch to preach to. Because I know that most of you are desiring to live right. I like that. And I trust that you will. Heavenly Father, tonight, I pray as the Apostle Paul that we all might be strengthened in our inner spirit. That's where we need strength. We don't need necessarily the five our energy drink in the morning to move if we live right if we get our rest if we're not full of anxiety if our body is not depleted from a lack of exercise in green smoothies in grapes when we have no energy we don't feel like doing anything and we're struggling, there's a sign that we need not only physical strength, and when we get depleted from wanting to do spiritual things, we are spiritually depleted. We need to just get on a right regiment program like most of us are doing by listening and hearing the Word of God being preached. Thank you for the energy that you give our folks. Thank you for the joy we have with one another. 
Thank you that we can fellowship together in your spirit and enjoy ourselves. And I do pray that you would give us physical strength, that you'd give us spiritual strength, and may you use us for your glory. Now bless the time of fellowship together, and we'll give you praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And amen. Let's go eat. Anybody bring in T-bone steak? <laughs> Round one. I don't like to eat on steak anyway. We got some good sauce. Oh, they're good. They're good. If you have an offer and above a dollar, please uh, see Richard. By the way, I might add. Our offer this morning was just a little over a thousand dollars. So y'all stop complaining that we don't have much. There are some people that love giving. And they give because they love the Lord because they have it. You give all you you give all you have to give. That's what I did this morning. What? I gave I want to shake your hand, brother. Just kidding. I'm doing good. Holy cow.